persons of the world, have I got a story for you. On the same night a woman murders her abusive husband, her dog attacks a cyborg. Ha ha ha. This is the Dapper Dailies Weekly. Last week we began looking into something called the Termination Collection, a bundle of five different movies. The collection came together in this box, which certainly sold me on the idea of a machine uprising. I mean, I'm always up for a good techno-apocalypse. Look at it. You've got a machine army and a human army fighting. You've got a ruined city in the background. You've got this big metal skull in the front. And if you look, there's actually a dark cityscape blended into it. That's really cool. Now you might be thinking, Red, didn't you learn your lesson from Rise of the Dinosaurs? The answer is yes, I did learn my lesson. I just happen to love the feeling of crushing disappointment. This week, I bring you Stormtrooper. This thrilling adventure begins with an emergency on generic government compound A with two cyborg- I mean, completely human fugitives escaping from confinement. They knock some people out and steal their clothes, but one of them is shot and has to be left behind. The man escapes and on his way out steals some weapons. It, hey, wait a sec. Hey! That is some guy on a motorcycle 30 feet from an unlocked shed filled with high explosives and military grade weapons. No wonder he got away! As the totally human and not at all robotic fugitive flees from the government, he's pursued by these two chuckleheads. And honestly, these guys are pretty great. At least with how stupid they can be. I love watching this guy fail to shoot a shotgun with any semblance of accuracy. I got a slingshot in the trunk, you want to use that? I'll nail him, I'll nail him, just drive straight. Whatever you say, Miss Daisy. I honestly think the movie would have been better if it focused on these two instead. After eluding those two, the entirely biological entity that is the fugitive gets into the stupidest game of chicken ever, resulting in him crashing and things exploding. I'm honestly not entirely sure what happens here. While that goes on outside, meet Grace. Grace is an abused wife suffering from deep depression. One night, she gets into a heated argument with her husband Randall. This is one of the weirdest things about the movie. The abusive husband becomes kind of sympathetic for a few moments as he talks about the pain of losing their son, which is then immediately ruined by this visual. I know it's supposed to be sad, but... <laughs> In the end, Grace shoots him in the back and kills him. In a panic, she stashes his body in the shower and starts to clean up. But wouldn't you figure it, her dog attacks the 100% human fugitive on tonight of all nights. She cleans and patches him up, but while they discuss his lack of memories, the two guys from before show up and wait, what the f***? Shotguns don't work that way. Stark dispatches the two agents, but more mercenaries show up to take him down. He then goes on a killing rampage that's about as difficult as convincing me that Pi is awesome. Stark was somehow hurt, despite the mercenaries being about as hard to kill as Goombas. And while Grace patches him up, we learn the truth. All I need is one. Yeah, but well don't get too fucking cute. People says this is a bad motherfucker we okay. chasing here. It turns out he's a cyborg. But a second wave manages to get the drop on Stark and shoots him down. They open him up to deactivate him, but instead of reboot him, turn him into total killer cop mode. You are under arrest for assaulting a police officer. Do not resist. Okay. Maybe it's just me, but if I absolutely 
had to have an off switch on my killbot, I think I'd make it harder to get to. I also think I'd make it actually turn him off. Stark determines that Grace killed her husband, finds her guilty, and sentences her to death. She damages Stark with a grenade, but he still manages to pin her down until finally he shuts down because of... water in his circuits, I think? You know... Romulus was taken down by a frozen former football player, but at least that was an actual opponent. He wasn't taken down by the f***ing rain. With Stark and everyone else dead, and the government supposedly chasing after her for good now, Grace suits up, grabs some gear, and leaves her old life behind, blowing up her house and ending the movie. They will come for you, Grace. Fight them. You must fight them. This is my other problem with the movie. It lacks focus. I mean, okay, yeah. Obviously it lacks focus. Duh. But there's no transformation for Grace, really. She started off a victim, and at the end, she's still kind of a victim. Okay, sure, she's dressing up, and she looks like a badass now. She's got guns, she's blown up her house, she's severed all ties to her past, but... It feels forced. It doesn't feel satisfying. It just feels kind of tacked on. If she'd gone crazy, sure, I'd buy that. If she ran away screaming, I'd buy that. But her just suddenly becoming tough? I don't buy that. And I should buy that. I would love to buy that, but I don't. Persons of the world, the machine uprising is on its way, but... Well, it seems to be taking its sweet time. In the meantime, we hope you've enjoyed. We hope you're enlightened. And we hope you make it. Till next time. <laughs>